Continue with Daybreak Live at a five minutes after the hour, 71 degrees in downtown Sylacauga. Longtime friend, Coach Earl Lewis joins us this morning. Coach, good morning. Hope you're doing well. Good morning. Thank you, Jimmy. I'm doing fine. I hope right. you are. I am. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, everybody knows what we're going to be talking about. I've seen it all over Facebook about you being on the show today. You kind of draw a crowd when you come oh, on, really? man. Are, are, they, uh, are they an angry crowd? Uh, or... Could be a few rock throwers. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Let's talk. Uh, about the swimming pool. You've been a big proponent of uh, making sure we do something right with the swimming pool, but do something. Where has you, where do you stand now, and has that changed? Well, Jimmy Dale, it has not changed at all, because I've been from the very beginning, when this started three years ago, or more or less, uh, I thought they were making a mistake by the way they were handling it, and it's, it's gotten worse instead of better since then. And uh, as some people know, and I don't mean this to be a star in my crown of any kind at all, but just for information purposes, I have a long experience with swimming pools. I started as a lifeguard and a flunky at the old municipal <laughs> pool when I was 14 years old, and I did everything from clean the locker rooms to a lifeguard to coach the swim team to charge the filters to chlorinate the water, everything you could do. So. I, and I did that from the time I was 14 till I was about 27 when I went to work for the school system full time and mm -hmm. left the recreation park. So I, I do have some knowledge. I'm not just spouting off from uh, no background, but we need a swimming pool, and we will discuss why some, I'm sure, as we go along here. Uh, we've had a swimming pool in Sylacauga since sometime during World War II. I never have been able to establish the exact date that the old Marble Bowl pool, which was where Buddy Peters Field is on, on Fort William. Uh, it was there during the 40s, and uh, when my family and I moved here when I was nine years old, that pool closed that summer, and the old municipal pool on the corner of Fort William that we took opened then, and that's where I worked. And, as a little kid, went swimming every day, sometimes two or three times a day. Who were some of the other lifeguards at Municipal Pool when you were uh, well, young? One, one that uh, everybody will remember, there's a picture that's floated around several times. It had me and Jim Heigl and Charlie <laughs> Baldwin and Robert Parrott as a four. Boy, what a quartet. Uh, oh, boy, what a one. <laughs> good thing we weren't singing. What it is. <laughs> but uh, before that, Jim Hillier and uh, uh, Jack Remsen and... Uh, even before that, Larry Edmonds and uh, Sarah Peters, who later became his wife, I think I've got that right. And then, then after that, uh, Robert Brown lifeguarded some. Dan Perkins was a lifeguard and the pool manager. Uh, uh, Nat Allen Lane uh, coached the swim team and, and and directed swim lessons. And so, just there's been a a, a lot of different people that. People will remember a few of them, at least, that, that were involved in that. Talk about the uh, disadvantages, Coach, of not having a pool here in Silicon. We go, what, three years now or so? Yeah. Well, the main thing, and I've got three stories I want to tell you to emphasize the value of a pool, but the main thing, you know, we don't have swimming lessons. And here we are between five different lakes that people travel to all the time, and none of our kids are getting swimming lessons unless they're going somewhere else to get them, which is happening. They're going to Talladega of all places to get swimming mm -hmm. lessons. And uh, they, they uh, and some people in their backyard pools are giving swimming lessons, but that's number one. And that safety aspect of that is, is the, the big deal. That we don't have a swim team, which we had a swimming team here in Sylacauga ever since the early 1950s. I know because I swam on it at that time and, and coached it for nine years after that and uh, that and then uh, just you don't have any summer job for lifeguard you don't have a summer job for a pool manager you just this and, and uh, adults that use the pool for water aerobics and all those things it, and it's just uh, it's a shame to be for us to have had a pool in the 1940s 50s 60s whatever and here in 2022 the era of of technology and all the things we can do, and we can't have a swimming pool. I, it just yeah. it doesn't make a lot of sense. What would you say, Coach, to people who would say, Coach, let's just shut up and 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 and, and leave this alone? <laughs> I, I probably would shut up. Maybe <laughs> I don't know what I would. I know to tell you the truth, Jimmy, I wouldn't because it's such a important thing. It's been important in my life, and I think it's important to the community for us to have a pool. 
and I'm sure there are some people out there that wish I would shut up, but there's a lot out there. Uh, you'd be surprised in walking through Walmart or the grocery store mm -hmm. somewhere, how many people stop me and say, keep it up, basically. You're, you're doing the right thing, keep it up. We need a food. And the, and the sad thing about it is, <clears throat> there were several sad things, but we could have repaired that existing pool for about $186,000, and the contractor told me with his own mouth that it would have been first class. It would have been just about like a brand new pool, and that was three and a half years or so ago. And instead, we went out on that tangent about having a splash pad, which is the second worst thing that could happen. The worst thing is shutting our current pool down and leaving it shut down. Second thing, a splash pad can be usable if it's in a complex with a lot of other things. But mm -hmm. to sit it out there by itself, uh, it's a known fact that splash pads breed bacteria. Uh, nobody is going to use it except the little kids, which is great for them. But what about the teenagers? You know, what are they going to do? They're not going to a splash pad, and they will go to swimming pool. Uh, the t three quick stories I'll tell you, I had a, about four years ago, I had a young man that I coached and taught back when he was young call me from somewhere up in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not patting myself on the back, I'm just giving some information. He said, first thing he said after, hello coach, he said, you saved my life the other day. I said, what in the world are you talking about? Well, to condense it down, he had fallen out of the boat, the boat actually sunk, and he fell out of it, and it was a huge lake. He told me five miles wide or something like that, <clears throat> and he was he's had some heart problems, and he panicked, and then all of a sudden in his mind, and this is a true story now, he told me for it to be true, he remembered a technique that I taught him at the old municipal swimming pool called drown proofing. And I won't go into detail what it was, but it's a, a way to rest and swim and save yourself. And he swore that that saved his life. He wow. said, I remembered what you did, what you taught me, and I used that to save myself. Then the second one, a young lady that I grew up with, and neither of us are young anymore, but we were young one, one time, named Melba Ham. She's married now and lives in San Antonio. Texas, but the people around here would remember Melba Ham, Mr. Earl Ham, who was the mm -hmm. water department superintendent's daughter. And she, at the old municipal pool, she participated in and taught synchronized swimming and also swam on the swim team. Well, just a few years ago, and I haven't caught up with in the last three or four years, she was still swimming competitively in an adult swimming program in San Antonio, wow. Texas. She got her start up here at the corner of Fort Williams and Wetumpka. Huh. Then a year ago, we had a reunion of old Silicago and Corner football players and a guy named Frederick Bohannon who had a twin named Franklin and they were the guards on our 1970 uh, state runner up football team. First thing he said to me after he said hello was I'm still swimming. And I said, well, I am too when I get, he said, I'm talking about I'm swimming competitive. Now, you figure out he graduated from high school in 1971, how old he is, and he's swimming in a league in Birmingham competitively. Wow. Now, he got his start at that same municipal pool, and mm. there's probably jillions of stories mm -hmm. like that that some other people could tell. All right, let's, let's get back to uh, the, the, the subject at hand here. Uh, you talked about the the uh, projected sprat, splash pad, which has gone away now. Oh, yeah, thank uh, you. But... We spent a lot of money with these groups coming in telling us what to do, and that money just lost. Oh, yeah, and we're still spending money on, on studies and so forth and nothing to show for it. And the the, uh, the poo, you know, it's, everybody knows it by now, but it's been proven the poo sitting down there as we speak this morning full of water, and uh, we, were, we were having, well, we've got a good picture of it, don't we? It's also a widely known fact now that one of the city uh, employees went down there and started the pumps up, which I, we were told wouldn't work at all, and ran some chlorine through it and cir circulated the water to kill some of the mosquito larvae and so forth there. And, and that poo could have been being used for the last three years while the city officials studied what they want to do long range and long range may be a, a 
not strong enough term because it's, it's already been three years and there's been no dirt moved and no decisions made and no no food. A city but, councilman uh, on this show who's a, who's a sitting city councilman now, uh, over a year ago, uh, we talked about this same issue and he assured that there would be a pool in the spring of 2022. We're no closer to a pool now than we were three years ago. Exactly right. And I've heard that same statement from uh, a city council, not more than one. And, and it's just a shame that the, 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 they've drug their feet on this situation. And one of the things I don't understand, Jimmy, when I worked for the recreation department, those full time, five and a half years, right after I got out of college, the park board was very involved in all the decisions that were made, what we did program wise and financial. It, they, they don't even have to know what's going on. The people, because I happen to be related to one of them that's on the park board and friends of several others, and there's only one or two of them that even know what's going on. Uh, had, had, had no input into what they're doing. So, so, Coach, in your opinion, what do we need to do? We need to fix that swimming pool that you just showed on the screen and use it while we plan uh, bigger and better things for the future. I mean, it, it's really simple to me, and I think it should be to everybody. Fix that swimming pool so we'll have one, and uh, in the meantime, start working on where they want to put a new facility and so forth. And, they, and we, you're not against that? Oh, no, I'm not against a new one. I, I, I don't see any reason to replace that pool right mm -hmm. now, but as far as building, a, it would be wonderful. I, when I was coaching the swim team 100 years ago, it seems like, I was wishing we had an indoor pool so because I had some really talented swimmers, and I'm sure there's some here now. I had some really good ones, and if they could have been swimming year-round, no telling how good they could have been. And, uh, and that having an indoor pool would be great, but not at the expense of not having one at all for three or four or five or however many years it turns out to be. So uh, why can't we fix this pool? Well, that's a that's another subject, and I've got a couple of answers for that. Probably mainly because they haven't the the leaders haven't taken the initiative to fix it. Because now it probably would cost more than the hundred eighty six thousand. This this contractor probably wouldn't cost a whole lot more. And the pool did have some problems that needed to be fixed, and and uh, it needed to have a lot of work done on it. But it could have been fixed relatively easy compared to what we're hearing what we've been told about it and it could have been being used and and uh, i'm going to tell you uh, uh, i'll try to make this as quick the pool was losing water there's no question right. about that it, it did leave it did need some repair but what happens jimmy dale and again this is from past experience you dig a hole and you put a swimming pool in it you run pipes from that pool to the filter system and to the drains and so forth you put a concrete deck on top of it that's heavy, heavy, heavy. You put traffic on top of it that's heavy. Sooner or later, you're going to break some pipes underground. And you're going to, where joints are, they're going to separate. And the water is going to leak out and it's going to wash a hole out underground under that pool deck. And it's going to probably cave in and it's going to leak. And I'm not a contractor and I'm not a geologist and I can't swear that this is what was happening. But I think that's where they were losing the water from some underground leaks rather than a crack in the swim pool or a sinkhole. You know, we were told there's a sinkhole under mm -hmm. the pool. There's no sinkhole under that pool. There may be one under where we're sitting right now because yeah, they're all over Silicaga. But there's not any more danger of a sinkhole there than there is anywhere else here. And, and they could, every year when I worked at the swimming pool, two or three times a year at least, we'd have to call the water department. And back then they did the work for us and they can't do that anymore probably. But they'd come up there and cut out a chunk of concrete, go on there, fix a pipe, throw some dirt in it, pour concrete back on it, and it would stop the leak. And I just feel like that that's at least part of the problem at, at down there that could have been fixed relatively easy. In the meantime, Coach, from the youngest child to the oldest citizen who would use that pool for exercise. Uh, we don't have anything. Nothing. And, and you look around us at other communities, they're far advanced ahead of Silicaga, and a lot of people think, well, that ought not be. 
Well, that it shouldn't be. And and one of the things though that people look at that I think they're probably a little bit in fairyland. They try to compare Sulacaga to Opelika and Cullman. All those have got interstate sure. highways running through them. They've got motels, they've got restaurants and so forth. We don't have that kind of money right now in Sulacaga that they have when they're sitting next to an interstate highway and they have all that traffic and so forth. And for us to think, well, we're going to wait till we can build a facility like Cullman did or like Opelika did or some of the Athens or some of the other towns that have got these. Meanwhile, we could have been, maybe that'll happen someday. And when they do, we'll all say that we pick or something. But, but in the meanwhile, those people you just mentioned that don't have anywhere to exercise, don't have anywhere to learn to swim properly, and uh, we, we haven't had it, and there's no vision right now to have it next year. It's not going not to happen by next year. If they started today, they wouldn't have it ready by next year. Time. Now they could repair the whole pool way before that, but I'm talking about building that new facility. So, if the pool facility now would not hold water, the video that we just showed had water in it all the way near to the top. So how's that? And well, that's what I was saying. I think it was being lost underground. The water that was le they were losing was so you see the pumps are not running now. So there's no water going through all those pipes that I described, going to the filter system and the chlorinator and the drain. Nothing's going through them. So the pool itself, is my opinion, and I think I'm right, the pool itself is holding water. Mm -hmm. It was losing water okay. through the piping system somewhere on the ground, and that can be fixed. And that, the, you know, they talk about the chlorinator and the pump not working, and, and proper maintenance will take care of that. Chlorine, as everybody probably knows, is a very corrosive gas and it can choke you to death. And <clears throat> you do have to be careful with it. But uh, those chlorine machines, if they were maintained properly, the, the chlorine machine and the filters were in the same room at the old municipal pool, and we managed to keep them running without any, any problem. It appears from the outside looking in, and I'm a novice at this, I don't, I don't know a whole lot about pools or anything like that, but it appears that a lot more people are thinking the way Coach Earl Lewis is thinking than seemingly the minority that is controlling all of this. Will they listen? They haven't so far. You know, they they tried to, people, different people have tried to approach them and uh, they haven't listened at all so far. And of course, I've, as you know, I've written a lot in the Sulacaga today about this situation and it's been basically ignored by some of the powers that be that are making the decisions. Mm -hmm. It's not been basically ignored, it's been completely ignored. <laughs> <laughs> you you really should know the facts just, about it? <laughs> they, they haven't paid, any, paid much attention. And it's just, you know, and another thing, Jimmy Dale, they appointed that steering committee to study this, which that's all they've done so far is study, 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 and no, no action. Those people are all good people. I don't mean anything sure. detrimental to any one of them as a person, but there are people other than myself. I knew they weren't going to point me to that because they're mad at me about speaking out. But there's several other people in this town that have similar backgrounds in swimming pools to me. Uh, Dan Perkins, for example, he's just per first one that pops in my mind. Some of them should have been on that steering committee to help make these plans. And uh, and for some reason they just pushed all that aside and put the people on there that they wanted, which again they're all good. I know all of them, and they're good folks. There's nothing wrong with them. But their background in recreation and in swimming pools and that sort of thing is not there. And uh, wow. they, there are some people, some good folks here in Sulacaga that do have that background. Well, we hope that something good comes out of it, and something good comes out of it real soon, Coach. Thanks. Taking well, the time to come well, in this morning. Thank you for letting me spout off a little bit more than usual, and uh, I hope somebody listens that counts and that we get something done. We there need we need to move and, forward. And you folks that are watching this morning, you count. Speak to your councilman. Speak to your mayor. Speak to the leadership of this city, and you tell them what you think. We've got more daybreak coming up in Amen. just a minute.